You were created to know and enjoy God. You were called to be in community so that you can become all that God desires you to be. God designed you with a purpose so you can be the difference in this world. And we exist to help you on that journey, Graceway. Hi everyone and welcome to Graceway. My name is Pastor Donovan and this is my friend, Pastor Marco. Today, we're gonna to dive into some comforting words of Jesus and how we can find rest. Absolutely, Donovan. Rest is something we all need, especially right now. Before we get started, let's sing along in praise with Grace Way Collective. Graceway, Pastor Tim here. So excited to have you join us. We're actually shooting 
for one of my favorite neighborhoods in our great city, the Crossroads neighborhood. And I'm excited today because I have three incredible announcements to get to, even though we are in the middle of a pandemic, even though in many ways we're shut down. God, as I've told you so many times, has continued to do incredible things in large part to your prayers, to your generosity, to your service. You guys have been incredible during this space. And so I wanted to let you know three things before we hop into the sermon. The first is next week, July 12th, we are going to move into phase two of our reopening. I know that so many of you are dying to get back to church. Man, I, I feel you. I'm, I'm 100% with you, but we want to be wise, want to keep you safe as much as we possibly can. And so we're going to move into what we've called our house party phase, which is that I want you to invite folks over to your house, want you to share a meal, want you to share an afternoon with not only your small group and your friends at Graceway, but your neighbors, maybe people that you've worked with in the past. want you to be praying about who God would invite, have you invite uh, to this house party phase. And we're going to, announcement two, uh, start a new series. And, and I'm incredibly excited about this new series. Uh, it's called Taste and See. And it is a journey through the culinary arts of Scripture. The Bible talk so much about food in so many ways. The cultures that are represented in the Bible, food was a sacred and holy and symbolic element, not only of their society, but of their faith. And so as we step into these house parties, I want to teach you about food in the Bible. I want to teach you about just the goodness and the provision and the beauty of God through meals and through, through, through food. And so I'm going to be coming to you from farms. I'm going to be coming to you from wineries. I'm going to be coming to you from kitchens. I'm actually going to be cooking while I'm preaching. Come on, somebody. It's going to be so, so good. Pray for our brother that he doesn't burn a house down. But we're going to have a lot of fun with it. And it's actually going to extend not only through our house party phase, but through our season of prayer and feasting. In January, we pray for 21 days and it's prayer and fasting. In August, we pray for 21 days and it's prayer and feasting. And so we're going to start July 12th with house parties and with taste and see. We're going to go through eight weeks of a study of food and meals and table in the Bible. And we're going to go through our prayer season together. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I think you're going to understand what God's trying to do through a lot of different cultures and mediums. It's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. Make sure that you invite somebody. Announcement number three. A lot of you know that we have been praying, we've been asking, we've been searching for God to provide us with a young adults pastor. And if I'm completely honest with you, I, I had a bit of a wish list. I, I, I told our executive pastor, Pastor John Baxter, that I wanted somebody who had worked with young adults, that I wanted somebody who could teach from our main stage, and that if I could really have the icing on top of the cake, that I wanted somebody who had planted a church. I really believe that this generation that is going to really form our society, I think they're known as millennials, come on with the millennials, right, uh, need a leader who has a reproductive theology, meaning they want to multiply leadership. They want to multiply God's move and, and, and churches and, and have been a part of that in the past. And so as we began to pray through that, God uh, answered our, our prayer and has provided us with a young adults pastor. A lot of you have already had some exposure to him. His name is Todd Gentiman. He was formerly the senior pastor of Apostles Church there in St. Louis, planted a great church about five years ago. And over the past handful of months, he and I began to talk about just what was God doing in his heart and how was God leading him and whether or not his, his path might intersect with that of Graceway. And so starting July 1, he is going to step into the role of young adults pastor. He's also going to be a teaching pastor and he's going to be helping us start a church planning residency and teaching in ministry school. He's going to be a busy dude, but we're really, really excited about this family becoming a part of our family. Pastor Todd, his wife, Juliet, and their three kids. I want you to be praying for them. God already sold their house. They're ready to go in that regard, but we're believing for incredible things. And over the next two weeks, Pastor Todd and I are going to co-teach the sermon today called Summer Slump and the first of the Taste and See. So I want you to be praying for the Gentlemen's, be praying for the young adults, be praying for the Taste and See series, be praying for house parties, be thanking God that even in the midst of a global pandemic, he's still doing his thing. <laughs> So 
So a couple weeks ago, I was sitting on my back patio with a friend of mine, six feet apart, don't send me any emails, all right? Uh, and, and we're just talking about everything that's going on in the world right now. And he sat there for a second and he said, bro, this is shaping up to be the worst summer of all time. <laughs> and you know, the reality of it is with a global pandemic, with the economic downturn, with everything that's going on around George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, and I, I feel like new videos are coming out every day. Um, he might not be wrong. <laughs> he might not be wrong. You know, what started out as a slow, uh, a, a slowdown uh, can really easily become a slump, just a full-blown slump. And, and if you're like anything like me, whenever I'm in a slump, I find that external things have a much greater impact on what's happening inside of me. Uh, no matter how much I sleep, I wake up tired. And even though I know intellectually that God is near to the brokenhearted and walks through the valley with us, he feels like he's a long way off. And so we wanted to just peel off some time. And Pastor Todd and I wanted to talk to you about this summer slump that we're going through. So many of us right now, our, our lives, our minds, our hearts, our soul feel like, I don't know if you've ever seen those long levels and you're trying to get the bubble in the middle. And some of us, that bubble is all the way out on the right or all the way out on the left. And, and my heart for you today is that I just want to help you with how to navigate, how to think about, how to respond well, biblically, healthily, Rest in, with restoration for your soul and mind. How can you get your equilibrium back? So as we get into it, let me pray for you. God, we love you today. We believe that you're not surprised by what's going on. And we believe, God, that you're sovereign and that you're good and that you're faithful. And God, our hearts is to hear from you. Our heart is to be able to follow you. Our heart is to be able to respond with a kingdom mindset, with restoration in mind, to be a city on a hill, to be salt and light in the midst of this great city that you've put us in, God. So would you lead us? Would you speak to us by your Holy Spirit in your grace for your glory and our joy? We love you, God. We thank you and pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. The incredible thing that God does for us in this season that we didn't expect, we didn't see coming, no one was praying for a year like 2020 back in 2019, but the incredible thing that God does is that he speaks to this moment in an incredible way uh, from the gospel of Matthew in chapter 11. This is what God's word says. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, there are some incredible truths for our summer slump in this text. But the first thing I want us to see today is that our text begins with an invitation. You are invited. Uh, God says this thing to us. He says, come to me. Uh, he doesn't uh, call us to, uh, to continue on in our situation, to figure our own stuff out. He says, you're invited right now. So if you've been waiting on a, a signed invitation by God, you have it right here today. Uh, God tells us, come to me. And the amazing thing is he tells us what kind of folks he's looking for immediately after this. Now, if you're like me and you're picking teams for uh, dodgeball or kickball on the playground, you're looking for the strongest leg, the strongest arm, the, the most physically fit. Uh, and so if, if, if you're God, what, what are you looking for to the squad that you're calling together uh, in this season? He says this, he says, come to me, all who are la who labor and are heavy laden, or all who are tired and worn out. So God is different than you and me. If we're putting a team together, we want the strongest people around, but God is different than us. And he says, in this season, if you are tired and worn out, you're in the perfect place for God. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. And what this tells me is two specific things about Jesus. Number one, Jesus values his strength over ours. Jesus values his strength over ours. Jesus doesn't care that we need to become stronger. He wants us to experience his strength in this season. He's not telling you to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. He says, you don't even have any boots. Come to me and I'll get you the, the right fit for the situation. Number two, it means that I don't have to act strong around Jesus. I mean, even around some of our best friends, we still put on fronts sometimes, don't we? 
But when Jesus invites us to come to him, he says, come to me. I know you're tired and weary. And the way to come to me is not putting on a front, pretending to be strong. So if you are tired and worn out in this exhausting season of a summer slump, you're in the perfect place to receive God's invitation today. The second thing we see from this is that we don't only receive an invitation, but we receive a gift from God. Notice the order here. God says, come to me and I will give you something. I will give you rest. The the reality is, is that right now, many of us are exhausted just trying to figure out how to get through the season. But God says, when you come to me, I'm going to give you something and it's going to be rest. You see, oftentimes we see our lives as this, uh, uh, everybody's working for the weekend, right? Like we got a bunch of weekend warriors in the house today and uh, we just work and work and work so that we can rest. But that's not how God intended us to work. You see, the way God has structured even our week shows us how he gives us rest. He says uh, the first day of the week, Sunday, give that day to rest and, and worship of God. And then the rest of your week flows out of that rest. So when you come to God, he's not saying work hard for me so you can, I can give you some rest. He says rest in me so you're prepared for the work ahead of you. We don't work for our rest. We work from our rest. And this is the gift that God gives us through the invitation of relationship with him. Thirdly, this text redefines our work. So not only do is it change the, the framework for our work that we work from rest, but it redefines our work. God's word here says, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, we are modern people, right? We don't, we don't really talk about yolks a lot unless y'all only eat the whites of the egg. We don't talk about that. But this is not the yoke that God is talking about. A yoke was a, a, a farming implement that was put over the shoulders of a mature ox. Uh, and so that would pull behind him uh, a tiller or whatever farm implement that would help the farmer cultivate the land. The, the, the ox would put in the work to cultivate the land. And how a a yoke would work is they would take the yoke that was over the mature ox and they would bring an immature ox alongside of him and attach him to that yoke. Now, the purpose of that was not so the immature ox could do the work with the mature ox. No, 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 no. Catch this. The purpose of that was so the immature ox could follow the steps of the mature one. So when the young ox would take on the yoke of the older ox, the purpose was not for you to do the work with me. The purpose was for him to follow while the mature ox bore the burden, while the mature ox carried the weight. And this is what Jesus calls us to do. Just come to me if you're tired. Take my yoke upon you, which means come alongside me while I work. You see, Jesus isn't calling us because he needs us to do the work. Jesus is calling us so we can follow him while he does the work. That is what our rest looks like. That when we're exhausted and tired, he says, hey, come link up with me so you can learn how I move. So you can learn my steps and follow me and see the work, be attached to the work that Jesus is doing in the world. Jesus doesn't need you to work for him. He needs you to come be with him while he works. And then lastly, this is one of the most amazing parts of this text. We are invited to rediscover Jesus. He says, come to me and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, if you're like me, this season has shown you that you need rest for your mind. Like you, you've just been thinking about a million different things in the season. You need rest for your mind but you also need rest for your body. You're like, man, I'm exhausted physically. My kids ain't been out the house for uh, three, four years now. Uh, I'm exhausted. I can't get, me and my spouse, we're beefing every six seconds. Uh, My body, my mind uh, are both uh, in in need of rest. But what Jesus says here is when you come from, come to him, he gives you rest for your soul. Now I want to speak to that just for a second. What the enemy wants you to believe is that you are merely flesh and bone, which means that you are nothing more than the physical. But what God tells us here is that we have a supernatural, eternal element to our life, which is our soul. Now, while we need rest for our mind and rest for our body, which God provides, 
He does something that no one else can do. And this is why Jesus is better than any other offer we have. Because Jesus gives us rest for our souls. Here's the work. See, our minds are always working for the next thought or the next solution. Our bodies are always working to get things done. But our souls are doing a different kind of work. Our souls are always looking for a connection to its creator. So when Jesus comes to earth, uh, the person of God with uh, human flesh on him, the word of God made human, he lives a perfect life. He dies a sinner's death uh, on the cross, and he raises from the dead to give us new life. When he does that work, he accomplishes all we need for our soul to be connected with its creator. So not only does God give rest for our mind, does God give rest for our bodies? He gives rest for our souls by connecting us, the only one who can, by reconnecting us with God. So in the middle of a summer slump, this is the work that God is inviting you into. Come to me. If you are exhausted and worn out, come to me and take rest. It is amazing that we have an open invite into the perfect rest found in Jesus. Look, it's no surprise we are feeling beat down and tried. It helps to have someone to talk to in those moments. Graceway would love to be that someone. Feel free to text or call the number on the screen to connect with us. No matter where you are in life, right now is always a great time to reach out. Those who give generously and tithe out of what they have been given actually fund the life change we see around Graceway. You can join us in that by going to visitgraceway.org give. So I had a mentor who, uh, whenever we would meet and I would talk to him about different ideas and theology and philosophy, he would, he would sit and listen to me patiently and then he would always say this phrase, yeah, but how? Yeah, I, I agree with everything that you said, but how, how do I do that? Pastor Todd just did a beautiful job unpacking the invitation of Jesus, come to me if you're worn out and tired and I'm going to give you rest and you're going to learn some things about me. But how, how do we do that in a really practical way? And so I want to give you four principles of rest, I actually in an acronym uh, for rest. Uh, four things that I want you to begin to do in the midst of, of this time that we're experiencing that are going to be restorative for you. Four things. Here, here's the first. The R is I want you to develop a, a new routine. <laughs> a, new, a new routine. If you're anything like me, I, I tend to be pretty routine. I like to have things be lined up. I like to know what to expect. And when this pandemic hit and we weren't able to go where we typically go when we were hanging out a lot more with our family inside of our house, all the restaurants were closed, coffee shops were closed, offices were closed. Our office uh, or our routine got got wrecked, at least, at least mine did. And, and in so many ways, instead of me kind of happening to my day, my, my day began to happen to me. And so I started to study the life of Jesus through the Gospels. And again and again, you see this phrase when it comes to Jesus, as was his custom. As was his custom. A, a circumstance was going on, and then Jesus would do something, as was his custom. There's another guy in the Bible that that phrase shows up. It's the Apostle Paul as was the Apostle Paul's custom. There are certain things that Jesus did no matter what was going on, no matter what was happening externally, politically, societally, culturally. Jesus, as was his custom, got up and did these certain things. I want to encourage you in the midst of what's going on. I, the truth is that we don't know how long this is going to occur, uh, but you need a new routine uh, and you need a restorative routine and you need a sustainable routine uh, that you're going to just choose to do certain things on a daily basis regardless of whether or not uh, everything opens back up, back up. You're not going to be dependent on what's happening outside because you know that if I'm always waiting on somebody else to do something for me, eventually that's going to have uh, 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 an effect on my soul, an effect on my body, effect on my relationships. And so let me be as practical as I can for you. What are the things that you have to be doing right now in order for your soul to be well and healthy. Things as simple as when do you need to get up in the morning? When do you need to go to bed at night? How much media do you need to consume? How much media should you not consume? How much do you need to be working out? How much sunlight are you getting? How much time do you need with your family? How much 
How many Zoom meetings can you have in one day? How much quiet time do you need? How much alone time do you need? You're going to have to just be honest with yourself about the effect of what's happening in our world right now and how it's affecting your mind and your soul and your relationship with God. I've talked to, to some of you who are saying, man, I'm having a hard time enjoying my, my, my time with God during this pandemic. Just I'm out. I'm, I'm like in a funk. I'm outside of my routine. Here's the deal. You need a new routine. You need to develop a new way to respond to what's happening in our world. You need to wake up in the morning. You need to decide before you have to decide, I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to spend time on my physical body. I'm going to spend time with the people that I love and that I care about. I have to spend some time doing certain certain, certain things for my job, and I'm going to spend some time on my soul. And, and whatever that looks like for you, I want you to begin to do that so that you're not craving and hoping that something outside of your control is going to happen that that, that negatively affects you. you know, just decide to, to have a new routine uh, right now. And, and as long as this pandemic is happening, it will be as was your custom in this season to do this thing at this time, to not watch Netflix every single night, right? To, to not have that drink every single night, to not eat those foods every single... No, I, I'm going to... I'm I'm going to lead myself so that I can experience rest and restoration in my soul. I don't want to look back on 2020 and say all of these external things happened and it, and it messed me up internally. No, I, I want to respond well and biblically so that I can be a part of what God's doing, even though the world feels crazy right now. So the first is I need you to develop a new routine. The second is that I want you to manage your emotions. Now, so many times in the church, we talk about emotions like they're, they're negative things. We kind of say them in, in, in whispers, and we say things about exceptionally emotionally people, and we, we say condescending uh, things like they're just immature, or they just, you know, controlled by their emotions. Now, obviously, uh, we don't want to be controlled by anything but the Holy Spirit, but emotions are a God-given thing, and it's important for us to be conscious of them, and it's important for us to be aware of them, and it's important for us to, to kind of respond to them, to, to manage them so that they don't manage us. But many of us, man, I, I know from myself, um, I, I, I've actually enjoyed certain elements of the slowdown. But I'm getting to the spot the longer it goes where I feel, I feel kind of restless, right? And, and the reason that I get feeling restless is when I'm not investing in things that are restorative. Uh, when I get feeling like life is happening to me, like my calendar's happening to me, like I'm not able to do what I would normally want to do, I get feeling kind of restless in my soul. And the only way for you to, to address that is, is to get some balance. It goes back to that level that I talked about at the beginning. I got to get that bubble back into the middle. And in order for you to get balance, you need two things. The first thing you need is some margin. Right. Whenever you study the life of Jesus, there are when there's big events that happen. Right. He, he preaches a great message and a lot of people hear it or he feeds the five thousand or you, you see him getting away from the crowd. You see him getting away from the circumstance and he goes off and he spends time with the father. I've talked to you so many times about during this this shutdown, during this pandemic, man, start taking walks. You know, most of the days when it's not, you know, a thousand degrees outside, it, there's beautiful days here in, in, in the, the great Midwest. Start taking some walks. Get up a little bit early. Take a walk and give yourself a little bit of margin in your day, a little bit of margin in your mind, a little bit of margin in your soul. And here's what margin provides you. It provides you with perspective. Uh, when I can not just be reacting to everything that's going on, I watch the news and oh, and I, I got the email, oh, and I, I, I was just on the Zoom meeting, oh, and I just got, I, somebody just said, I'm just, I, I'm already feeling restless and, and, and there's a fragility to my soul, a rigidity to my soul that I'm just knocked back and forth. No, you, you, need, some, you need some margin. And, and it's, it's up to you to establish that margin. And margin gives you perspective, right? So let me say it to you the way that the Bible says it. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Hey, don't be anxious about anything, okay? Hey, hey, Grace Way, I, look, I know what's happened on the news. I know what's happening in the world. I know there's no vaccine. I, I know racial tension and systemic... I, 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 know, I know, I know, I know all of that, but don't be anxious about anything. But God never tells you to do something without giving you a replacement. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God says, if you'll stop freaking out and reacting, if you'll give yourself a little bit of margin, which will give you a little bit of perspective, if you'll talk, if you'll set aside time uh, in, in your routine to talk to me about what's really going on in your soul, how you're feeling about what you heard, what you saw, what is happening, what isn't happening, if you'll do that, then I'll give you a peace that will protect your heart and mind. And it, it will, it'll blow your mind. You're not going to be able to find it anyplace else. But so many of us, we don't want to do the first part. We want to freak out. We want to have no margin. We want to have no perspective. We want life to be happening to us. And we want God to bring out his heavenly magical wand and tap us on the forehead and give us this peace that passes understanding. That, that's not what the verse says. The verse says, if you're going to receive what God has for you, this gift that God has for you. I want you, I want you to, to manage some things a little bit differently. And when it's new seasons, it's a new routine. When it's new seasons, it's, it's new management of your emotions so that you can have more margin, so you can have better perspective, so I'm not reacting and anxious and worn out and frustrated and restless. No, I, I'm walking with God through this, this valley, right? And I'm learning from new things about God and new things about myself. And, and my soul is being restored even though the world is going crazy. So the first is your routine. The second is managing your emotions. The third is, hey, hey, hey church folks, remember the Sabbath. You say, man, I've been on a Sabbath, right? <laughs> I've been on a Sabbath this whole time. No, 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 no. A, a shutdown or a slowdown is not the same thing as a Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath is, is something that many of us forget is in the Ten Commandments. Right? Hey, take a day off every week. I know you feel like you're in a completely different rhythm and routine right now, but you still need a Sabbath. And, and maybe you actually need a Sabbath worse than ever. Things are shut down and slowed down. You need, you need a Sabbath worse than ever. Here, here's God's rationale in Exodus chapter 20. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember it uh, because we tend to forget it and keep it holy. In other words, make sure that you're always doing it. Six days you should labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, don't do any work, not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your male servant, not your female servant, not your livestock, not the sojourner who is within your gates. Here's the rationale. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh. Therefore, because of this, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. I don't know if you ever thought about this. The Bible says that God created everything that we know in the first six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. Now, when did he create Adam and Eve? He created them on the sixth day, which means that their very first day was the Sabbath day. That their very first day, they spent it enjoying the presence of God. God says, I want you to do that. I, I want you to remember that. I, wa I want you to understand that, that a Sabbath day is the day in your routine that you set aside time for margin and perspective to enjoy the presence of God. Now, how many of you know that, that just because you're not going into the office, I, I know you're working seven days a week. I know that you're available through your iPad, through your Zoom meeting, through your phone call. I, I know that, that some of you are working way more in this new normal than you were pre-COVID. And I want to remind you that your soul needs a Sabbath. You need a day where in your routine you say, no, I need this margin, right? No, I need this perspective that comes from this margin. No, I need to enjoy God at least once a week. Listen, everybody, even in the midst of COVID, you need a personal day off. You need a personal day off where your phone isn't banging and bonging and buzzing at you, where the iPad is put away, where there's no Zoom meeting canceled, no, no Zoom meetings scheduled. You need a, a weekly Sabbath and you need an annual vacation. You say, I had a vacation. We had to cancel it because of this stupid pandemic. We'll figure out another one, okay? This isn't about geography. This is about the restoration of your soul, right? This, this is about you figuring out a way to put yourself in a position and to have a routine where I'm interacting with God based on the context of what's going on in my world. And right now, what's going on in our world is, is, is chaos and is craziness. And it starts to wear on 
wear on our soul over time and a slowdown turns into a slump and in a slump the external is affecting the internal and in a slump I'm sleeping but I'm waking up tired and in a slump I, I'm, I'm, I know God says he wants to be near but he feels a long way off no it's because you're not it's not I'm not investing in restoration that Jesus says come hey come, come here come here I want to give you something it's not that Jesus doesn't have it. It's that he wants us to come and do it his way uh, to be able to receive it. And so develop a routine, manage your emotions, make sure that you remember the Sabbath. And then number four, conquer your thoughts. <laughs> conquer your thoughts. Uh, here's the thing. In the middle of pandemics, in the middle of bad 24-hour you know, news cycles, Satan bombards us every day with seeds of unrest. Some of you just think that you're watching the news. No, you're actually being bombarded with seeds of unrest that if you do not make sure that you pull those weeds out of your heart, they will grow up into restlessness and chaos and confusion and slump in your heart, in your mind, in your relationships, and in your home. And so here's how I want you to think about this. When I get information, I mean, we're in the information age, and because everything is mobile and according to online and the internet and all this, I'm always getting information, okay? And so I want you to begin to think, when I get information, how, do, how am I thinking about the information that I got? The Bible talks about taking your thoughts captive, taking information captive. I have to think about how I'm, how I'm thinking. I, I was just in the office and, and, and Pastor Andrew, our outreach pastor, is reading a book called How to Read a Book uh, it's by Mortimer Adler. It's an uh, incredibly famous book. Some of us, we need to think about how we're thinking and we need to take our, our thoughts captive. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, we destroy arguments in every lofty opinion. Come on. We, we destroy, well, I don't, I don't care what the expert on the news channel said, we destroy arguments in every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And we take, here it is, every thought captive to obey Christ. If you're like me, I have found that if I don't take my thoughts captive, my thoughts take me captive. And some of us right now, we're being bombarded with what we just think is the news and information that's actually spiritual warfare. Come on, somebody, you are, you are over investing in a lack of rest in your soul. You don't have a routine. You, you, you're not managing your emotions. You aren't taking a Sabbath. And, and your thoughts are telling you what to think instead of you taking your thoughts captive. And so I want to encourage you that when information comes, and a lot of, it's, a, a lot of it is coming at us right now, and let's be honest, not, not even the same information, <laughs> disagreeing information about, about COVID, about, about what's happening around uh, you know, racial tension and systemic rate, like uh, around politics and elections, and take your thoughts captive. And not, not just take my thoughts captive, but, but the second piece of that is, is, is trust in the Lord. I don't just take my thoughts captive so I can hold them. I take my thoughts captive so I can give them, so I can give them to God. Proverbs 3 and verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Friends, we're in, we're in the middle of a lot of uncertainty. Um, if you're under the age of 40, maybe the most uncertain time that you've ever lived in. What's going to happen next? How long is this going to go? Who's going to become our next president? You know, uh, I, I, in, the, in times of uncertainty and mass amounts of conflicting information, Christian, trust God. Trust God. How, 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 do, I, how do I, Jesus, you tell me to come to you so that you can give me rest. How do I do that? You do that with your time, your routine. You do that with your thoughts. You do that with your emotions, and you do that with Sabbath. You come to God, and you say, God, I'm overwhelmed. God, I'm worn out. God, I don't know what's coming next. But God, I do know who you are, and I do know that you're faithful. And I do know that when I look over my shoulder with the benefit of hindsight, I can see that I can trust you with what comes next. Friends, I want to I encourage you today. God hadn't lost us. God's not out of control. God's not concerned. God's not watching the news for what's coming next. In fact, I believe that God's doing a completely new thing. I, th I think that 2020 is a year that we're going to look back on and say, that was crazy. But God started something in 2020 that we're living in the blessing of years and years later. And so I want to pray for you here.
And I want to remind you that you need Sabbath. And I want to remind you that God's bigger than the information, than our thoughts, than our emotion. I want to ask you to start taking control of your time and your thoughts and getting your eyes back on Jesus and seeing that he's doing a good thing in the midst of this chaos. Amen. Let me pray for you. God, we love you today. And God, we thank you that you call us to yourself and that you say, come to me. Anyone who's worn out, anyone who's tired of Zoom meetings, anyone who's stressed, anyone who's afraid, anyone who's worried, anyone who feels like what's going on is a lot bigger than them, come to me and I'm gonna give you rest. And you're gonna learn things about me that, that honestly you can only learn by going through this with me. And so God, I wanna pray for my friends who are watching right now. I wanna pray around their time, around their thoughts, around their emotions, around their Sabbath. And I wanna ask you to be near to us in the midst of this. God, when we get over watching the news and over worrying about our circumstances, we lose sight of you, but we believe in faith that you're doing a new and a good and a powerful thing that the gates of hell can't stand against. And so I pray, I pray God, that, that you would make that a reality in our hearts and minds. I pray, God, that you would renew our hope and our strength. I pray, God, that you would restore us in the midst of this, allow us to walk this out with you for your glory and our joy. We thank you for what you're doing, for what you're gonna do. We believe that your promises are yes and amen. And we say in the name of Jesus that we trust you today, that we love you, and that we're excited for what comes next. We thank you, God. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, I love you so much. I'll see you soon.
love endures. When I think about distance runners, it hits me just how much endurance they have. For instance, ultra marathon runners compete in races that span a hundred miles. Your body has to be in peak physical condition to endure that race. Yet Jesus's love goes further. The bike riders who take on the Trans-Siberian Extreme Race, that's a 25-day ride covering roughly 5,656 miles. Jesus's love goes further than that. It's an immeasurable length at which the love of Jesus will go to find you. There's not a chance that you can run, ride, or hide from it. Once you embrace it, you'll be forever changed. We're gonna sing Graves in the Gardens, but before we do, let me pray for y'all. Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you that your love is deep. Thank you that your love is wide. We are so thankful for your love that we can never run from God. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your grace and thank you for new mercies every morning. God, we love you so much. Thank you for turning our graves into gardens. We're going to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, y'all. Let's sing together. I search the
sing that together. Yeah. 
Hey, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We are praying you take some time to find rest this week. Also, we want to invite you to week one of Growth Track, happening online today. Growth Track is the way to get connected with what God is doing at Graceway. Check out visitgraceway.org forward slash growth track to register. You can join us from anywhere on the globe. We hope to see you there. Also, don't forget, you can chat with us by calling or texting the number on the screen. Before you go, let me pray for us. Lord, thank you so much for another day you gave us. Thank you for the way that we are able to connect with our people. Thank you, God, that we are here today. And now, Lord, we ask you to give us a wonderful week. And thank you, Lord, for everything you did today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.